Hello, I'm Nicola Bowen, Principal of The Natural Smile, and today we're going to be looking at just a really simple occlusal cavity. It's a replacement of a composite, a leaking composite with secondary caries underneath. And we'd got a deep enough layer to want to put some biodentine in to replace the dentine. I'd got no concerns that it was particularly close to the pulp, but it's really just getting that base layer in there. So, as I say, it's a really, really straightforward procedure, this one, and what we're really looking out for all the time is that I want to do very little shaping of the biodentine once it's set. I'm aiming to get as much as the shaping in the placement as I put it in, and really trying to be thinking about the, the shaping of the dentine within that cavity and the depth of it. So that's what I've tried to look at with this one, keeping the margins clear, keeping the enamel margins really clear so that you can really look at getting your restoration in straight away afterwards. So enjoy watching and I just really hope you find it informative and useful. So, okay, we've got a composite that we're replacing here. We can see some grey shadowing all around the margins and spreading into some fracture lines, measly and buccally. Um, and then we're seeing the same on the bite wing that we've got an area underneath the, underneath the filling. So we're going to run that out. It's deep enough to warrant us wanting to put biodentine in there. Um, and then we'll replace the fill. Probably run these fracture lines out a little bit. So we'll see what we find. Okay. Okay, so in this distal area, and often we'll find that that can go through all the way to, um, you know, almost a little distal cavity. I don't think it is going to in this case, but if it was with using biodentine, I'd always, if I can, try and maintain the marginal ridge. And it, we're not, not necessarily a tunnel prep, but clear that all out. And knowing that I've got biodentine in there means that I know that that, that cavity, you know, unless we've got diet issues, we've got, that's not going to be crest be able to progress from that uh, outer surface so yeah almost like a tunnel in the old style tunnel preps if that had gone almost to the the surface of the enamel I would try and still keep that intact and just get the biodentine into there So having used the biodentine for many years now, you just get so much confidence with it as a material. We know that it's going to, if we've got any active, as long as we get a good seal, if we've got any active caries, that's going to bring it to a standstill. So like I was saying, if we saw that progressing distally or measly here, but, and also when you get that bond to the surface internally, and once it's had time to really build up those links with the natural dentine, you know it's going to really, really strengthen that internal structure. And yeah, and the, the best thing is you've just got no irritation to the pulp whatsoever. So that's not shockingly deep, but that's a nice, nice depth to get a good layer of biodentine in. Um, and certainly we get, as we get closer and closer to the pulp, the biodentine absolutely comes into its own in that it just lets the pulp settle naturally and we, we get virtually no irritation after the fillings have been placed. So now we're going to mix the biodentine. We take it out of its pack, give it a little tap, unscrew the cap we then add the drops so it's five drops and it's a continuous squeeze not releasing between drops we place one drop on the slab recap the biodentine place it in the mixer and then we set the mixer going for 30 seconds Once mixed, we remove from the mixer, unscrew the cap, and then place the biodentine on the pad. At a distance away from the liquid, 
already placed so we don't get any mix together. We tap down the biodentine to get a nice creamy consistency. At this stage, we then would hand to the dentist after setting a timer for 15 minutes. So at this point, I would be using my favourite instrument for this, which is a PF49, a plastic. Um, and initially, I'm just wanting to check the consistency, making sure I'm happy with that. That's really nice and creamy. That's pretty, pretty ideal as far as I'm concerned. Separate a small amount out and I should be able to pick, pick it up with that. Then get some nice, I want it to, um, I, I've started rolling it because that's a really nice, to get a nice smooth edge is really, that's how I like to place it in the cavity and at that point it's ready to go. We've got a little bit of flow to it but it's not dripping but we've got some good firm consistency so at that point for me that's ready to go. What I, what I will have used the water for and you'll see me using shortly is using a bit of a little brush in there, I'll brush over the cavity and just get it very slightly wet using that same liquid and I don't want it pooling, we'll try and show you this on the actual cavity, um, I don't want it pooling, just very slightly wet so when I carry that to it we've just got a little bit of tack to draw the material down on into the cavity in the position that I want it for to. Okay so straight away I'm just going to, we've got a very dry cavity now I don't want it completely dry, but we use the liquid that's left over from the mixing of the biodentine just to wet the, the base of the cavity. Again, don't want it too wet at all, and just want it to provide a little bit of tack. Okay, yes. so what I'm doing here, we'll use this instrument straight away just to check the consistency. That, I think, is pretty perfect, especially for an occlusal where I'm not worried it's not going to you know, be flowing, trying to flow out of the, the, the box at all. Okay, so that's a nice consistency. Get my gloves really nice and dry. I want that smooth surface when that goes in, so just giving it that little bit of roll will give me that. And then place it, trying to miss the margins. That's just about done it as it goes in, so you just pop it into the base and then no packing, it's just teasing it into position. I basically am aiming to keep these margins clear. I want good adherence up against the walls. So I'll just nudge, it's just really nudging it into place. And that is just about perfect for this. You're also trying to think about the height that you've got that you're creating. I'm just trying to think as I'm placing this just really what the dentine morphology would be like. So probably once that's set we'll take a little bit off the occlusal surface to make it a little bit more concave and following the fissure morphology but that's really nice. We've got good positioning up against the walls there and we'll get a really excellent bond all around the outside with the etch. So great. Okay, so we've set the timer now. It's been set since the biodentine was mixed for 15 minutes. We would have planned under ordinary circumstances to do, um, to do other little jobs that we've got to do in the mouth. So we look at the treatment plan, we really incorporate that timing into this so it's not dead time at all. You know, and if nothing else, I'm turning around and using it to be writing notes and... Um, we just let the patient, we'll pop this out in a moment. Once I've got that initial setting, we start to get that surface layer and we've got no worry about moisture contamination, then I would roll that over, pop this out and then let the uh, nice patient have a little rest up. So we're just about 15 minutes since that material was mixed and so we'll go in and start to check that. That's looking and feeling. It's still a little bit soft, but that's. I want to just take that down to get some nice shaping about where the, the fissure shaping would be on the surface. And that's just nice. That's just really nice. That consistency now be able to work with. So I use an excavator to do any occlusal shaping I want to. I use a Ward's carver if we're down in a 
in a box and I want to shape across the front. Um, but really I try and get as much as the shaping in with that initial placement. And then I want to really make sure we've got some clear, clear margins. I'll just remember that. So you, so you can see at this consistency, that's scraping away really nicely and that will blow away really well as well. If we let it go, as that goes a little bit harder and it will suddenly go in those last couple of minutes, it just is a much harder job. You almost, you quickly get into sort of denting consistency. So you're, you're needing to, you know, sometimes we'll need to take a bow to it, which I really don't want to be doing. You've got much less control with that. Okay. at a moment but those cotton wool rolls have stayed really nice and dry um, here when you haven't it, as long as I've got that initial set and it started to retain its shape then I'm happy we'll put the cotton wool rolls in and I'm not it doesn't affect it too much having some having the saliva washing over there on that setting surface okay I'll just have some suction tape. Okay, all right, Sam, do you want to just bite that together on there for me? Okay, I think you are good to go.